All right, welcome back to CADES.com tutorials from Revit Architecture 2012. We got another question on the website about creating a stacked wall situation where you have brick on the bottom and siding above. So I'm just going to run through that real quick. There's actually two ways to do this. Um, Revit does offer you what's called a stacked wall. If you look under walls, and you can see under your basic wall here, if you scroll down, you've got your curtain walls, and way down there, you've got your stacked walls. Uh, some people hate stack walls. They do have some issues. They're not perfect, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create them. It's probably your best bet if you're beginning. And then I'll show you an alternative. It has a couple more steps, but it seems to work really well. And if we have time, I might just show you how to do a compound wall. Um, the basic train of thought is if the thickness of your wall stays the same throughout the wall, use a compound wall and just add different sections to your layers. If your thickness varies, like you go from brick to siding, um, then you use a stacked wall or double walls like I'm about to show you. So it's actually really simple. We're just going to come in here and edit the wall type. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this brick on metal stud. That's going to become the bottom of our wall, but I need a siding on metal stud. So I'm going to duplicate this and create a wall with siding real quick and you can start these from scratch but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it this way I'm gonna change this material to siding and I'm gonna change the thickness to I don't know let's do one and a half inches so now there's my siding on metal stud another thing about walls if you notice you've got core boundary this is your exterior side your interior side you have to have something in the core boundary that's how Revit works um, of course that's going to be your structure and if you notice structure has a one by it substrate's got a two this finish happens to have a four these are all your functions structures one substrates two thermal layers three you got two different finishes four and five um, and then the membrane layer which doesn't count Revit does its cleanups in, alpha, in uh, numerical order number one will cut through anything to join it with another wall that has a number one there. Substrate will cut through three, four, and five, but not number one. This thermal layer will cut through four and five, but not two or one. So anything below it, it won't cut through. Anything above it, it will cut through, basically, as your number from one to five. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK a few times. And now I've got two walls. I've got my siding, and I've got my brick. So I'm going to go back into edit type. If you see under family, I'm under basic wall right there. I'm going to go to stacked wall. We already have one, but I'll show you how to, how to create one. And this is going to be siding over brick. With metal stud, I'll just take that little number two off. This just happened because I hit copy. So now we just create a new wall. There's the original wall. I just created another one. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and say, okay, on the bottom, I want my exterior brick on metal stud, which is right there. And on top, I want my siding on metal stud, which is right there. Height. This one's, one of them's always going to be variable. If I wanted a six foot of wainscoting, type in six foot, and you'll notice it goes up to six foot. Uh, the user had requested three foot. So there you go, there's three feet. Hit OK. Hit OK again. You're still in the wall command. Just draw a quick uh, rectangle here. We'll go to a quick elevation view. And there you see I have, and I can even dimension it for you, there's three feet. And there's the top of my wall, there's your siding, there's your brick. Um, if you wanted to do a wall sweep right here, for a transition piece, you could do that. And again, you would come to the. You would have to put that. You could do it two ways. You you cannot do it in a stacked wall. But you can come over here into a wall. And probably do it on, on the brick wall. So if I came in here to wall. Oh, you know what? Sound let me go to walls. I'm in elevation view. Can't draw a wall in elevation. So if I come over here to wall and I go back to my brick, I'm just going to do this real fast. Let's see brick on metal stud. 
and I can edit it. And then right here I've got sweeps. Well, if I wanted to, I can load a sweep. Uh, and I'm not going to worry about a profile, but let's just do a five inch wide. And offset, setbacks, and distance will be uh, oops, three feet. From the base, and if I hit OK, you see it put this little profile in there. Now since I'm editing this wall, it's also going to edit this wall here, or it should anyway. See, now I've got that little transition piece right there that I just put in with the profile. So that's real easy. You can do a uh, water table or whatever you want there. And I'll change the color here so you can see a little bit better. So there's my brick. There's my little water table profile. And I just use a standard. It's not even really for this wall by just being lazy. And then there's my siding. And it's a stacked wall. So that's one way to do a compact a wall like that. And that's not a compact wall, sorry, it's a stacked wall. Another way to do it would have been I'll go back to my uh I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. Well, I guess I'll just leave it. We'll do it out to the side here. Now another way I could have done it is again I could have drawn a wall. And some people do this, they will actually take their um their wall. And they'll remove basically the structure. Oh, see, it's not letting me move the structure because you have to have a structure. So let me just uh, move that down. And then now I can delete that structure. And I'm just going to move all, all this outside stuff down. And basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'll create two walls. I'm going to take that. I'll leave that sweep on there. So this wall is basically just the exterior stuff that I had. And I can even go one further. And actually I should probably just do this. I'll take the uh, thermal layer. Let's see. I guess I could leave it like that. I guess I could leave it like that. It doesn't really matter. Oh, and I made a mistake. I did not copy it. So let me cancel that out. Gonna call it exterior brick. There we go. Move all this down into the layer, into the core boundary. We'll delete anything below it. Uh, structure is gonna go away. And just to make this easier, I'm just gonna leave the finish for now. We'll get all rid of all this membrane and substrate. So there you go. I have a brick wall. And then I can do the exact same thing for my, actually I can just uh, duplicate this and call it a siding. And what we're going to do is we'll change this back to siding. And we'll make it inch and a half like we did before. Okay. So now I've got two walls. I've got a siding wall and I've got a brick wall. So what I can do here when I go to a wall, I can actually just draw the interior partition. Actually, no, I can draw just do a generic, just to show you what's going on here. I could do a generic wall, then I can come in here and say, okay, I want to draw my brick wall right next to it. And instead of wall center line, let's go ahead and do the uh, interior finish face. There's that wall. And that wall is going to go from level one to level one, and we'll make it 36, 36 inches tall. And then we can come in here and join these two walls. It's a few extra steps, but in the long run, it actually seems to work out pretty well. And the reason we join them is when we put a door in there, it'll cut through both walls instead of just one. And then we can come in here again and draw your other wall. So basically all I'm doing is I'm splitting up the wall. Instead of having one solid wall with components. And there's my siding. I'll just drag that down here. 
And yes, because it's over, it's overlapping the other wall because I have not set my base offset yet. So we'll grab that siding wall. And that's going to be 30, ah, 3 foot offset. Now if you go back into a 3D view, you can see... Oh, I left my sweep in there. Edit that real quick and take that sweep out. Remember I used a... Uh, I use this wall for both of them. So basically, I got two walls. They look the same. Um, you can lock these walls together so that when one wall moves, the other one will move. I didn't actually lock them yet, but you can do a compound wall. I mean, a uh, stacked wall, or you can actually draw one core and then stack these on top of each other with separate walls. Um, two different ways to do it. This has a few more extra steps, but you'll find if you have a real complicated wall and a complicated wall join stacked walls tend to break and they've come a long way but they're just not there yet so there's two quick ways to do it and while we're here I'll show you how to go ahead and create a compound wall it's pretty simple we'll go back to wall here and let's just I'm just gonna pick exterior brick for right now now when you're editing a wall typically it's gonna come in like this and if you hit edit you know, if you can hit preview, it'll get rid of that preview pane. None of these are clickable. You have to be in section. Okay, so you go into section. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And actually, you know what? Let me do this real quick. Because this is going to mess up my other walls. I believe it is exterior break too. Okay. So like I said, you have to be in section. Let me get rid of my wall sweep. And there's your wall. Well, what if I wanted, you know, stone on the bottom and a soldier course in the middle or something? Well, if it's all going to be the same thickness, um, actually, you know what? Let me just go ahead and add a couple of boundaries here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this finish. This is going to be a real simple wall. I'm going to move this up out of the core. And then this will be a 6 inch wall. So there you go. Now I got a 6 inch wall. I just want to show you there will be a couple of boundaries there. And that could be a stud layer. And you can see that's as simple as adding layers to the wall. You just kind of build the wall as you would. I could add sheathing and thermal layer and all that good stuff on there. But anyway, first thing I'm going to do. Um, is come over here to split regions. If I hit split region, you see I get this kind of line in my section. If you see, if you hit it just right on the edge, you can see a little line in a dimension. Well, if I split that up, now that's split into two, right there, and it's one foot seven inches. And if I go back and hit modify, the thing you don't want to do is hit escape. If you hit escape while you're in this wall command, it backs you out of the command. It doesn't escape the um, whatever you're doing. You got to hit modify to get to the next thing. I can actually do my temporary dimension, make that 36. Oops, I did 36 feet again. Three feet. I have a keyboard shortcut at work and my other computer, so I'm used to doing that. I don't have it set up on this one. That's why I keep doing that. So now let's go ahead and come over here and click and hit insert. And we're going to insert another finish. And this one we're going to set up as stone. I believe there's a default masonry stone. Right there. Okay. So now we got a masonry stone. So how do I assign this to that? You can see the thickness is still at zero. You highlight, you know, just click on whatever line you want to assign, and then come over here and put assign layer. And then if you highlight over here, you click on the edge, boom. Now that is now masonry stone. And that's brick. So I can do that and I can come back up here again and do split region again and say, okay, I want to split it there. I didn't get the line in. There's one there, and there's one, let's make it 10 inches, there, okay. And again, if you go to modify now, another thing I wanted to show you, this is, see that little arrow's on top? This is 10 inches from there to there. If I click this, it will now give me the dimension from here down to, to the next layer, which is here, 8 foot 8. So that's all that little arrow does. This tells you what, so you can change your dimension. So I want to go ahead and insert one more time. And it's going to be another finish. 
And this time it's going to be Masonry Soldier Course, right there. Select it, assign layer, and I'm going to assign that layer to the Soldier Course. And you can see it's highlighted, so it's assigned. So now what I have is Stone, Soldier Course, Stone, Brick. Hit OK. And there's my compound wall that I just created. And I'll draw that wall right there so you can see what it looks like. Of course I'll need to flip it because I drew it backwards. Okay. And there you go. Now I've got brick, stone, and that stone doesn't have a, pa a pattern on it. That's why you can't see it. But you know with that gray stone. And there you go. I just created a compound wall. So if you have brick striping or coursing, but it's all the same, if you notice this is all the same wall thickness all the way up, you would use a compound wall. If it's different wall thicknesses, and I'll go ahead and delete that wall real quick, you can see it's thicker on the bottom than it is right here. Then you use a stacked wall, or you can go ahead and just split it up, draw the core, and then just draw the finish on the outside of it. And it's that simple. That's how you create walls in Revit. Thanks for joining us, and uh, just drop us a line at caddies.com in the suggestion box if you have any more suggestions or you have any more questions. Thanks for joining us.